Marks is gathering into the zone. Score! Echo wins it and the Sun Devils make it 18. Likowski and Nick, the Sun Devils have the number one team in the nation. The Lindenwood Lions come into Oceanside this past weekend. The Sun Devils get the split, but Friday night's victory was probably the biggest one in school history. Yeah, Austin, for the first time in my four years here and for the first time in school history, the Sun Devils took down Lindenwood, the Lindenwood Lions, the number one team in the country. I think the only victory that's even comparable to that one uh, in the past four years is two years ago when ASU took down Liberty in the national tournament, but just... Overall, a great game. Ben Finley saved the day with a pair of late goals. Dave Jancy was able to force a late face-off. Colin Heckel took control from there, won the draw right to where he told his defenseman to line up, and Ben Finley cleaned up the trash on the rebound. Nick, he definitely did. You mentioned Ben Finley. Kind of quiet up until this point in the season, but the number one team in the country comes in, and he lights up the scoreboard. You're exactly right. Finley struggled a little bit to start the year. About a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks, at that ACHA showcase, he scored a big goal against Liberty. And then forget about it against the number one team in the country. Finley Potts, three of ASU's five goals, is the best player on the ice, making plays almost every shift. He really showed why he was so heavily recruited by head coach Greg Powers. He definitely did. Now, ASU is currently number seven in the country. Every team in front of them has lost except number four Penn State. Rankings come out Friday. Where do you think they're going to end up? I think they have to be top three, Austin. I don't know where in the top three. I think right now one's a stretch. My guess is they won't jump Lindenwood just because purely the respect factor that Lindenwood still receives. I could see them being ahead of Penn State right now because Penn State hasn't beaten any quality teams yet. They destroyed Illinois on Friday and then held on to beat them 5-2 to two on Saturday. So that's going to be up to the coaches, I would assume, either number two or number three for ASU. Three will tie them for the highest ranking in ASU history. Two will be the highest ranking in ASU history if they claim the number two spot. Well, we will have to wait until Friday to see if you are right, Nick. But when we come back, head coach Greg Powers will be joining us. You're watching Hell Frozen Over. to the challenges before us. Arizona State University. Catering to luxury living, Dolce Villaggio is a modern townhome community located at 2nd Street in Hardy, near ASU, Tempe Arts Center, Sky Harbor Airport, and the Metro Light Rail. Dolce Villaggio offers two and three bedroom homes featuring exquisite kitchens, granite counters, stainless steel appliances, comfortable living areas, two car garages, plus the community pool and spa. For pricing and availability of these gorgeous townhomes, visit our website at www.dolcevillaggio.com. Dolce Villaggio, the place you want to call home. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. Nick Licalzi and Austin Controllis being joined by Arizona State's head coach, the man, the myth, the legend, Greg Powers. And coach, you finally slayed the dragon. We did? For the first... <laughs> Well, you took him down once at least. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good it was a good win. Um, yeah, it's I could you know it was a good win. It was one of the best wins we've had in a long time, if not ever. But uh, 
to a man, there wasn't a guy that was uh, surprised or incredibly overjoyed by it because we expected to do it. We truly, genuinely did. So, Coach, Lindenwood hasn't been swept since December 4th, December 5th, 2009. You guys were so close to doing it, only lost by a goal. What went wrong Saturday night? You know, I mean, a couple things. One, our uh, our power play was just horrendous. Um, I think we were 0 for 12 on the power play on the weekend, and we were at a, a 34% clip before that. So uh, we have some adjustments to make, and we're going to make some changes, and we're going to uh, do a few di- things differently uh, going into Oklahoma on the power play to, to shore that up. But at the end of the day, we just didn't put the puck in the net. We got uh, everything we needed defensively from the guys. Shacker played an- another really good game, but... Um, you know, when you score one goal, you're not going to win a lot of games. Coach, you talked about Mark Shacker going into this weekend, how important he was going to be and how big of an egg he laid last year against Lindenwood. He came in and played absolutely spectacular, only giving up three goals. Can you talk about a little bit about the impact that Shacker had? Yeah, he, he was great. I, mean, I think he was he did exactly what he needed to do to get us a sweep, and we can't ask anything more out of him. And um, You know, last year I, I wouldn't really, you know, define his performance as laying an egg per se, but... Um, you know, he's played a lot better, and he played a lot better this weekend, and um, I'm glad he got to uh, slay the dragon <laughs> before he graduated. Coach, you nailed on the head, 34% this weekend with the power play. They were 0 for 12 this weekend. Is it going to be a personnel change? What are you looking to change in those power plays? There definitely will be a personnel change on, on probably both power plays. Um, what those will be, I, I, I know, but I'm not going to talk about what they're going to be right now. Um, but uh, we're definitely going to make changes on both. Coach Ben Finley brought his game to the next level this weekend. You talked about him a lot uh, during the recruiting process and how important he was going to be. Your confidence finally paid off in number seven. Yeah, you know, I mean, as a coach, you know what all these new kids can do, um, but there is a, there, you know, whether or not they realize it or respect it or know it, there is a definitive adjustment period when you come from junior hockey to playing college hockey. There's a big difference in playing in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, which is a very good league, but you're playing against 16 to 19 to 20 year olds. Now you're playing against 20 to 24 year olds. So there's an adjustment period. All of our guys that that came in from junior hockey um, are adjusting well, and and thank uh, thank goodness that Finns is uh, adjusted early, and he's been a huge piece to our success so far. Coach, number eight, Oklahoma, coming in this weekend. Last time you saw them, they eliminated you from the national tournament. Talk a little bit about them. They're a great program. A great program. We have a tremendous amount of respect for them. They're very well ran. They always have a, an insane amount of talent. Uh, and uh, and now they have a really good coach in his first year. Uh, Peter Arvantes is doing a great job, and um, he's got tremendous pedigree. And I watched them play twice at the showcase, and they looked like a different Oklahoma team from the past. They looked more structured, more disciplined, more put together um, as far as, you know, on their bench and, and, and how they were playing. So, you know, our hands are full. They are a definitive top four, top five team easily uh, right now, and uh, and we're going to have to be ready and, and play uh, as good, if not better, than we did against Lindenwood to get a couple of wins. And Coach Oklahoma had a pair of big wins at that showcase over both Davenport and Adrian, excuse me, um, What's it going to take? It appears like Davenport and Adrian may have taken a step back since last year, but this team is the same team that knocked you out in the national tournament last year. They still have a high-powered offense led by Blake Martin. What's it going to take to come into Oceanside and get the sweep that you guys are looking for? We're just, you know, the whole mantra all season is we have the talent to beat anybody, and Oklahoma certainly has the talent to beat anybody they play, but whoever works harder for 60 minutes is going to win the game. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, and I'm not, it's not saying like Lindenwood on Saturday outworked us, but – they did a few more things, uh, you know, grunt-wise in a 2-1 game to win the hockey game than we did, and that's why they won. So, you know, if we outwork Oklahoma for 60 minutes on Friday and Saturday, I think we'll win, and vice versa, I think they'll win. Simple as that. Well, thanks for joining us, Coach. Congratulations on the big win Friday night. Good luck, good luck excuse me, against Oklahoma this upcoming weekend. When we come back, we will be with the hero of the past weekend, Ben Finley. You're watching Hell Frozen Over. Imagine what it feels like to be a champion. To have sold out crowds every game. To know that night in and night out, your team is the best. 
1-0 pitch. Swung on and this loop into shallow right field. That'll drop. And the Sun Devils have won it. We all want to win. But are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Are you willing to make a year-round commitment to being a Sun Devil? Will you be there for us every game, helping us win? Make a difference by joining the Sun Devil Club. It's one thing to be there when history is made, but wouldn't it be great to know you helped make history? One devil at a time. We all joined the club. In the need for a bartender? Hey Bartender offers old-fashioned service mixed with a contemporary style. Professional bartenders are available for your next wedding, mixer, graduation, pool party, or banquet. To order service for your upcoming event, call 602-410-2227 or visit heybartender-az.com. Maybe you think work stops at 5 o'clock, that the evening is a time for watching TV, taking a little walk around the block, or hanging out with friends. Maybe you're the type who does some light reading. For Sun Devil football, no matter what time it is or where we are, the work never stops. It's time to go to work. It's time to be a Sun Devil. And we are back on Hell Frozen Over. Joining us now, freshman forward Ben Finley. And Ben, while you managed to save ASU this weekend with those two goals on Friday night, you weren't fortunate enough to save our colleague Andrea. She almost got run over by a Zamboni <laughs> and then actually fell on the ice. Can you walk us through what happened here? Well, uh, we were starting the interview there along the boards, and the Zamboni was making its first round. And looks like we backed up a bit to let the the man do his work and pass by and it looks like she's running on the ice i don't know oh, there she goes yeah i, I was uh yeah, i hesitated to laugh because i thought she she was seriously injured but uh looks like she was okay and i was nice enough i guess to pick up her necklace for her so, uh it, it turned out better than i guess it could have so quite the gentleman ben saving the necklace and her picking up looks like you guys went for a little spin of a dance right there yeah. as well <laughs> Ben, after getting the monkey off your back two weeks ago, you had a coming out party against the number one team in the country. How did it feel? Uh, it felt good. I mean, you know, it, it was uh, past due and in my head. Uh, I wish I could have started a little bit earlier, but it's good that it's coming now. And, you know, I just hope to keep this, uh, you know, keep the stick hot right now. Ben, you were highly recruited, uh, highly recru regarded recruit, excuse me, this off season. Why did you choose ASU and has it met your expectations so far? Uh, it's definitely met my expectations for sure uh, and maybe even exceeded them. Um, the hockey of this league is uh, beyond what I thought it would be. Um, there's a lot of talent throughout the league up and down and especially in our dressing room right now. Um, you know, I came here, well, you know, for a lot of different reasons, but Coach Powers made, pitched a, you know, a good sale and, um, you know, we got a great program, great hockey program and you know, the school is great. It's everything I'm looking for in my edu with my education. And, uh, you know, it, it's just it's everything I was looking for in a college hockey program. And ben, you talk about Coach Powers. I'm going to throw you into the fire right now. You've been playing hockey for quite some time. How does he compare to some of the other head coaches that you've played under? Oh, man, uh, I've played under all different types. But uh, Powers is a player's coach, and he's, you know, he's great to us, and he, he takes care of us really well. And, uh he knows what he's talking about when it comes to the X's and O's as well, which is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great uh, to have a guy like that. You know, it's easy to play for a coach like Greg. You got number eight Oklahoma coming in this weekend. What do you guys really have to do to get that sweep? Um, well, I think uh, Coach Power said it earlier, but we just got to work these guys. Um, you know, I, I, I watched them play a little bit at the showcase, and they look very skilled. I was very impressed with them. Uh, they move the puck quick, and I think, uh, you know, we, we do well. We do as well. Um, we move it well, too, and we got some skill. So it's going to be whoever, uh, you know, plays 
60 minutes each night. That's who's, who, who's going to win. Um, obviously, our special teams needs to, you know, improve a little bit if we want uh, a legitimate shot at taking these guys down. Ben, let's go back to last weekend a little bit. The number one team in the country, I'm sure nerves were a little bit high in that locker room. When you guys took them down on Friday, how confident were you guys going into that Saturday game? Um, you know, we were, I guess we were confident. We we obviously knew we could beat them, but we knew that before Friday night too. So I wouldn't say we were overconfident. We knew that uh, it was going to be another challenge. And, you know, it was obvious that those guys were going to come out, you know, faster and harder and seeking revenge and, you know, they had a lot of excuses for, for taking a loss on uh, Friday night. You know, them coming in, uh, you know, you could say bus legs or plane legs or whatever. But, uh, no, it was it was great uh, beating those guys at least one, of the, one chance. Well, that's all the time we have with Ben Finley. Ben, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the big weekend. When we come back, we're going to take a look at number 8 Oklahoma and some other big matchups around the ACHA. Stay with us on Hell Frozen Over. you've lost that love and feeling, donate it to Good Wheels. Your unwanted vehicle will help fund job skills training and human services programs for disadvantaged Arizonans. You'll even receive a tax deduction. So call 602-416-6278 for more information. Or visit us online at www.goodwillaz.org. Good stuff, good work, good will. Tacos? Nah. Burgers? Yesterday. Right. Mm, I'm thinking. Mongolian. Looking for a fresh, healthy alternative? Take a trip to Genghis Grill. Spice up your favorite meats and seafood, then load up on veggies. Choose a sauce and let our Genghis Grill masters cook your selection to perfection. Genghis Grill, masters of Mongolian stir-fry. Hey, go vegetarian. <laughs> ah, chicken. Me too. Uh. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. I'm Austin Controls with Nick Lacazzi. Nick, some big matchups around the ACHA this weekend. Can you walk us through them a little bit besides ASU and Oklahoma? Austin, you're exactly right. The ACHA has a huge slate of games this weekend. We have a graphic that we're going to get up in just a second. There it is right now. The biggest one is going to be number three, Ohio. At number four, Penn State. The first true test for the Penn State team, and it's really going to Push them to the limit here as they took down Illinois this past weekend, 11 to nothing or something like that on Friday. The game was a little closer the second time around. Number 22, the University of Arizona is going to take on number 9, Iowa State, who we'll see in two weeks. Number 2 right now, Davenport, who slipped a little bit, is taking on number 13, Liberty, who ASU defeated over a week ago in the showcase. Another team that they defeated, number 6, Delaware, travels to Rhode Island to take on the 13th ranked Rams. That should, excuse me, the 10th-ranked Rams. That should be a, a pretty good matchup in and of itself. And then the team that we saw last weekend, the Lindenwood Lions, will play host to Central Oklahoma, who will be here in a week as well. So a lot of these teams who ASU is going to play this year are getting some real competition as we start to head into the meat of the schedule. They are. That Penn State team looking pretty good right now. I think you said over the weekend their top line scored nine points in that first game. That's pretty impressive. Now, Nick, you were at the national tournament last year when ASU faced Oklahoma we we'll talk a little bit about that. Austin, ASU was favored going into that game. They went 2-0-2 against Oklahoma in the four games going into that one. The game was a nail-biter, as it was expected to be. Blake Martin got the lead goal for Oklahoma either in the, th the second or third period. I don't remember off the top of my head. And ASU started coming hard as the game started to wind down. They actually scored what could have potentially been the tying goal. I believe we have video of that as well. Joe Schweiger put what looked to be the tying goal in the back of the net with something like 13 seconds on the clock, and they waved it off. It was 
really a heartbreaking end to the season for Arizona State, something that you didn't expect to see, especially with how uh, quick that play was. It was really a bang-bang play. The referee, though, was very set in his call and made the decision that thereby ended Arizona State season. Yeah, quite a controversial call in such a huge game, I would say. We got Oklahoma coming in this weekend. Number eight in the country, probably going to be the second or not the biggest matchup this weekend. Walk us through how that one's going to play out. Yeah, Oklahoma has a pair of big wins. I believe it was Adrian and Davenport that they defeated already. And ASU and Oklahoma always play some close games. They are built very similar to ASU in the fact that they're a powerhouse. And as of late, they've been very consistent, similar to the Sun Devils. Both teams lost some big players these past few years. ASU retooled very well. I don't know about Oklahoma. I know Brad McCabe and Justin King, who had Mark Shacker's numbers last season at least, is gone. And that'll be big. McCabe and Schweiger were usually the two leading scorers going back-to-back. Schweiger, obviously, for Arizona State. So neither of those guys are there. Colin Heckel and Blake Martin are going to really take over the reins. Martin, a senior now, who's been there for quite some time, but it was never really his team, or at least that's the way it appeared from the outside looking in. I could be wrong. It'll be interesting to see how Colin Heckel does now as the captain against this team that eliminated ASU from the national tournament last season. And it's a new Sun Devil team, so it should be interesting to see how they come out and perform against this number eight Oklahoma team. I think this series is a... I I think the Sun Devils are going to be able to sweep this one, unlike last week, and what do you think? I think it's going to be a tight match series all the way through. I think the power play is definitely going to have to be fixed, Austin. That's going to be the key this weekend. They were so good for so long, and they kind of just hit a brick wall. I think the head coach of this team, Greg Powers, has his work cut out for him to figure out what they want to do, whether it's putting Parson back on the top unit with Heckle rather than Charwa, whether it's getting Dave Jancy up front, however they want to mix it up. Another guy that they need to get going again is Patrick Rogan, who seems to have been doing more physically as of late than on the score sheet, and that's the exact opposite than of what we've seen from Rogan the past three years, but he's going to be crucial as he and Liam Norris are quite the tandem of playmaking centers behind Colin Heckle, and if those guys can get clicking, the Sun Devils are going to be tough to beat, and like you talked about, if if Rogan and Norris can click this weekend on their separate lines and those those lines behind the Heckle line are clicking, ASU should be able to pull out the sweep. I think a realistic expectation is a split, but a sweep's definitely not out of the question. Well, we'll see how we do next week. I have the sweep. He has the sweep, I think. I think you're going with the sweep. (laughs) I think if I had to make a prediction, I'd say sweep, but I don't know if I'd be disappointed with the split. Okay, well, we'll see how that series works its way out. That's all the time we have here on Hell Frozen over for Ryan Hess, myself, and Nick Lukowski. Thanks for watching. Tune in next Wednesday to catch us again.